And now, here is singer-songwriter, broadcaster, audio-video artist, entertainment agent, and your host for the Dharmic Evolution, it's the master storyteller himself, James Kevin O'Connor. And welcome back to the Dharmic Evolution, where we stack the cool in stereo. Yeah, today we have a wonderful guest, a dear friend of mine. I haven't seen her in a long time, and we reconnected just in time for me to see her breathe. This is her new book. It is Chara Rodriguez. And Chara, otherwise known as Chara.tv. Let me tell you a little bit about Chara. This is exciting. She's a wife and a mother. She's the creator of Soul Path Yoga and the Optimal and Dream Life programs, inspirational author, actress and soul whisperer, and self as artist for Awakening Avatars. Since 1995, Chara has been a student, a teacher of yoga, meditation, mindfulness, and inspired living. She specializes in sharing empowering messages and practices that support the process of illumination, transformation, and celebration. Known for her intuitive, poetic, and loving style, Chara's intention is to inspire people all over the world to live their own kind of magic. She's just released a brand new book of sacred poems and self-images entitled Breathe, which is now available on Amazon. It explores awakening to your creative power, seeing yourself as sacred, and reflecting on life, love, and the divine. To complement her new book, Chara created an amazing guided meditation called Breathe and Let the Magic Begin. This will change your life. And it's available for free on the homepage of her website. Just head over to Chara.tv. Chara's number one goal is to support you to live your magic. So you better strap up your seatbelts and let's go for a ride. Are you a singer-songwriter, author, speaker, or thought leader? Have you been looking for a platform for your career? Well, the James O'Connor Agency has exactly what you are looking for. Find out how we write and produce big, amazing songs on Music Row for authors, speakers, thought leaders, and organizations like nonprofit and corporations. We also help singer-songwriters and artists by giving them a platform on Dharmic Evolution, a podcast designed specifically to broadcast your global career, now in 71 countries and with more than 161 episodes of artists all over the world from all genres. We know how to reach your target audience. Are you a dreamer like James? Then reach out today to james at thejamesoconnoragency.com and find out how we can help your global career. So, Chara, welcome to Dharmic Evolution. It's so good to have you here. Thank you. I am so excited to be here. I really appreciate the opportunity. You know, it's uh, it was so good to connect with you after so many. It was it was quite a few years and we didn't see each other, you know. And uh, I think the last time I saw you, I was playing music in your studio in in an actual yoga class. Yes, and I think it was Christmas Eve. Was it really? Oh, I wow. think so. Yeah. yeah. So that's about, I think that's about five years ago or maybe, maybe even six. But, um, so, so much has happened, uh, to you since I've last seen you and, and to me, of course. But the real big news, the real exciting news is Breathe, your new book. (laughs) Yeah. So for you folks who don't know about Breathe, here it is. Okay, it just came out, and we're going to get into uh, some of the cool topics about this book. Um, but first of all, let's rewind a little bit. You've been on a journey with yoga for um, for quite a few years now. And um, could we start with that and share with people your experiences? What brought you to the yoga community, the yoga lo- lifestyle, and now becoming a coach, a teacher, a mentor, so many things that you have done with your life? Uh, Thank you for that question, James. What brought me to start practicing yoga was almost having a nervous breakdown from stress. I was working in the media field and video production, and I could barely breathe. I had heart palpitations. I was just under constant stress, and I really didn't 
have any tools at the time. So I was 25 when I took my first yoga class. And the thing I will always remember was when my teacher, Claire Dieb of the American Yoga Academy, had us lie down. And the first word she said was, breathe. <laughs> I didn't even really know how to take a deep breath. But just the invitation to breathe, I started welling up with tears. And when that first conscious breath that I invited into my body and my heart came in, it was like a ray of light came into my being. And from that point on, uh, different teachers, different tools, different styles, just in their own way, started to um, bring me back to life and really helped me refine my center and my dharma, which is one thing I wanted to talk to you about today because I love the title of your show, Dharmic Evolution, and that is one of my favorite words. And the style of yoga that I developed over the years is all about supporting your dharmic evolution. So it's about the practice that we explore and experience on the mat and tools and principles that um, really help you be more aware, more skilled and more loving at being you and being on your soul's path. And also taking those awarenesses and skills and tools with you off your mat into your life so that you can really live your full potential. And I call the style I teach soul path yoga because that's what it's about, your soul's illuminated path. You know, so you, so when you were in this um, this media field, you were in you were in television production, right? Yes. So so I can imagine the stresses for that, the deadlines and the gotta have it done, and there's no excuse for being late, and on and on and on. Um, so do, were you kind of like almost like? Um, on autopilot, you didn't really realize that you there was a person underneath all your responsibilities, right? You were just machine-like? In a way, yes. Yeah, yeah. And I was not tuned into my heart other than the fact that I felt like it was tight and I couldn't breathe, but I was not tuned in to my truth, my needs, what was going to be supportive to my well-being. It was like all of that was put aside to finish whatever task or job was at hand. Right. Everything else had to wait. Yes. So it must have and been... Um, I want to tell your, your listeners that whether you practice yoga or not, it doesn't really matter as long as you are breathing into your truth and your heart. And I actually started before I found yoga, I started with a book called Simple Abundance by Sarah Van Brethnock. And she was teaching what you were just talking about, about little moments of connection and little moments of gratitude. And so instead of coming into the office, because I was still you know, working in that job for a while before I became a yoga teacher, I would sit down and even if the computer was on, I would drink my tea and enjoy my tea. I started, you know, um, appreciating moments. I started just slowing down a little bit and being more in tune. And then that's when I discovered the yoga and everything just started to change for the better. So when you first started, Chara, like how did, you know, how did you describe this to family and friends? Did they think um, you, you kind of whacked out, you lost your mind? Because <laughs> you probably started at a time when it wasn't really mainstream yet, right? Like how many years ago was, was it when you started? You are so right on, James. <laughs> I started in 1995. There were no yoga wellness studios. Uh, my first class was in a YMCA. And I was very fortunate that there were some incredible teachers at this YMCA, teachers that have gone on to uh, own their own studios and create their own teacher trainings. Um, and my family said to me, are you sure it's not a cult? <laughs> <laughs> of course. They were, they were a little concerned. And then, you know, me being the 
inspirer that I am, like as soon as I started feeling better and understanding these tools were so powerful, I wanted to share them with everybody. But not everybody was interested at the time. Right. So I had to tone myself down a little bit. And then when I started teaching, I had that joy of people coming because they wanted to. And then I got to just fully share. And those were some of my best classes. My first classes when I knew hardly anything other than what I had been taught and trained to do just at the beginning. This is something I wanted to share with your listeners um, and anybody who's in the creative arts and whether you're a singer songwriter or an artist of any type or, or just a human being creating your life. We tend to think that the best teachers are the most experienced and it feels like we are never enough. We never know enough. We've never done enough. We're never educated enough. And I like to remind myself that some of my best classes were the first classes because I was so excited and passionate to share. And everybody felt that love coming from me. Share with me your um, and with us, I should say your your biggest win. So you you'd been doing this for a while, and you were reaching people, and you know, I'm in my crystal ball now. Just for those of you who think I have this written out, <laughs> <laughs> and and you felt like um, there was a moment where you really connected to somebody, and you saw like their eyes open, and they they really got it. And it has it has more to do with. Not just all the physical or not just the, the spiritual, but the combination of, yeah, I know why I come here now. I get this. I really get this. Is there anything that comes to mind where you had somebody in, you know, specifically, you know, become reached in that way? Yes. Could I come up with one person? I don't know because there is so many. Well, that's even a better answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I will I will pick one person because this is such a significant uh, person in my life, and her name is Casey Sable, and she started coming to my yoga classes. She's an amazing woman. She's the founder of a, a company, a juice company called Lizzie J's Juice. Um, she is raising her two children on her own. She is so strong. She's in the fitness world also. So she was coming from a place of health and well-being, but just needed that extra affirmation, just needed those extra tools to kind of go to that next level. So she came to my yoga classes, started taking my optimal life course, then she took my dream life course, and this woman is skyrocketing. Now the reason I picked her is because when you do something out of love, it always comes back to you, whether it's through that person or through another person. But months later, after we had finished some of the courses together, I knew her, I knew her she was a visionary. I knew she had this skill set that I didn't have. So I called her for help. And I said, I know my heart is telling me I am ready for my next creative endeavor, but I have so many that I started, maybe some of your you listening out there can relate. You've got so many things on your table and you just don't know which one to focus on. I couldn't even hear my own heart and I'm pretty good at that at this point. She came to my house and she said, I know what you need to do. You need to put together your poems and your photos. And she helped me step by step create this book. So by me giving my gifts with such enthusiasm and passion just because I wanted to, just because that's what I'm made to do, that love and um, her skills were brought back to me to create something that I didn't even know was possible yet. So so meeting Casey was was the bomb for you. That helped you yes. really, really get... <laughs> You know, you, um, and that's pretty cool. I like the Lizzie J's juice. Very, very cool. Um, you know, that's a problem that so many creatives have. Uh, and I've, I've met so many. I'm the same way. You, you create, 
you know, you're you're creating all the time. And mm-hmm. uh, you and I talked about this last week when you, you're saying like, well, yeah, I have this idea and this. And, you know, I have them all on the board. I mean, they're all things that are going to happen and they have been happening, but you feel like you just can't do it fast enough. It's like, I got to get this going, you know, but wait, I have, I, you know, I have so much here already that I'm trying to focus on. So that, that is a, um, that's an area that desperately needs coaching, you know, for somebody like you or any other people who are out there coaching, that's something that you have to, you know, I learned from Brendan Burchard a few years ago at one of his seminars, it's focus on the one thing, the one thing, the one thing, and that's so critically important. And, um, and I actually was was almost finished. I was seventy percent through uh, my third, uh, second, second uh, full length album on Music Row, and I stopped because I wanted to do the podcast. And it was, you know, I didn't give up the, or I didn't, you know, give up the idea of the album. It just felt too self serving. So I said, I gotta focus on something that's really important to me but so i get you about that let's talk a little bit about the book so the book is exciting it just came out like last week right yes so the breathe book is out there folks it's available at can we pick this up at amazon yes it's right on amazon you just search breathe and just put my name in chara and it'll come right up okay excellent um and You know, we want to talk a little bit about, first of all, you spent a lot of time, energy, uh, and commitment to get this, you know, book out there for everybody. Uh, Can you take us on the journey of, you know, was it blood, sweat, and tears? I know it was a lot of tears. I don't know if it was any blood, but (laughs) I'm sure it was sweat and tears all the way. So share share some highlights of the creation of this this beautiful um, piece of work here. Thank you, James. Um, It has been a journey, uh, my whole life journey. But I'd say about 25 years ago, I had this weird, bizarre calling to start photographing myself. This was before selfies. Nobody was photographing themselves. As you said, that felt kind of self-serving and weird and, and is that narcissistic? So, but I was very aware that I had that feeling that I wanted to do that. Lo and behold, I was in college at Rutgers and taking photography and our teacher gave us the si- assignment of a self-portrait. And I thought, wow, now I have permission to do a photo shoot, a photo shoot of myself the way that I want to do it. I have permission. And this was a point I wanted to share with your readers too. So many times we have a knowing in our heart and we don't trust it. We're waiting for someone else to give us the affirmation or the permission to go ahead with what we really know we're meant to do. So for any of you listening out there who have a knowing in your heart, this is your permission, go do it, go explore it. So I started taking um, photo shoots of myself throughout the years. It would usually happen when I was going through a transition or something very difficult, some some sort of heartbreak of some kind, I would have this sense this need to photograph it because now I understand later that it was a way to express it to process it to heal from it and to create something beautiful out of the emotions that I was feeling in my heart in a way that nothing else would allow me to do in addition I've been a poet for a long time so writing was another outlet So over the years, I've just had these envelopes and photo albums in my basement, in my closet. That was way before digital. And then as the years went on, I started obviously um, doing it with a digital, uh, my phone or whatever, in a digital way, which is much easier to work with these days. Right. And that was just set aside, though. It wasn't in my mind as practical as some of the other projects that I could end up focusing on. So again, when my friend Casey came over and she said, you need to do the photo books, 
it was like, and, and the poetry, it was like a lightning to my heart because it is the closest thing to my soul. It is the most authentic representation of my journey, my beliefs, my heart, the, the hopefully messages of inspiration for others. And it's un, I won't say it's unedited because obviously I've edited the work, but um, it's very vulnerable. It's the most vulnerable thing I have ever done, which is very exciting and a bit frightening. So for any of you out there who are pouring your heart and soul into your creations, your songs, your words, your music, your artistry, I'm going to encourage you and encourage myself at the same time that that is what's most meaningful. That's what's going to touch another heart. And so my hope with this book is that the, the insights I've learned on my journey I'm able to share and hopefully touch your heart as you're reading them as well and give you the encouragement and permission that I so needed as I was going through uh, living some of these poems. Yeah, you know, you mentioned uh, permissions, and I'm so glad you brought that up because that's really, really important. I went through that myself, and and so many times... um, you know, I'd, I'd throw in with somebody who was giving me advice and then I'd turn around like six months later and say, wait a minute, that was that was all wrong. I felt that I was supposed to go on this path and I felt it, felt, felt it very intuitively and very strongly. However, I didn't act on it because I didn't have the confidence and I always figured somebody else knew more. So. Yeah. So that speaks to that speaks to growth. When you say when you no longer need permission from anybody for anything, um, you've probably moved on in your path. And you know, I'm not speaking just to you, Chara, but anybody listening who who knows exactly you know and has been in this position. So when did it happen exactly for you? When you you know you mentioned the, the one event, but from there on, was it? oh, I, I just never need this anymore. I kind of know where to go. Is that how it worked for you? Like you don't need a permission need slip for, for, no, a permission slip for anybody, for anything that you create. Like, you, I guess you don't have to look for somebody to bless it because you're, you're, you're guided divinely, I guess is a way to put it. Absolutely. When you are guided divinely, you have that trust. There may be, a little bit of fear that comes up now and then, like maybe halfway through the production of this book, there was a moment of terror. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, what am I doing? Yeah. And when I would feel that, I would breathe into my heart, remind myself. And every now and then, if I needed a little encouragement, I would ask for somebody that, from someone that I ask, I would say, you know, I'm feeling a little frightened about this and you know I could use some encouragement and I think the encouragement that we need comes to us like this podcast is encouragement for anybody who's listening and life if that is what you're needing will give you that encouragement will give you that sign will give you that message to say yes go forward yes you can do it yes begin because when you're just beginning, these little steps um, are very important. There is no such thing as a little step. You saying yes to whatever you can do toward what you're being called to do is not a little step. It's a huge step of courage. You know, let's talk a little bit about um, coaching, mentoring, because you do all of these things. You you help people as a coach and a mentor, and and just my own, um, you know, personal trail of being coached, being the recipient of wisdom, and people who who have gone through things way before I did. And I've studied so many people, like from the Tony Robbins to the Brendan Bouchard, Jeff Walker, all the online people, uh, seminars, podcasts, all of these things. And I've learned a tremendous amount, but I've also learned as a coach myself, you know, there's a takeaway you get there when you um, infuse or impart information, um, 
experiences that you've had that you want to share with people who who are perhaps younger or haven't had that experience yet, but you always come away as a learner as well. Like you're, you're enriched, you know, by the experience of sharing. So can you tell me um, some some examples of where you felt this, where you've helped somebody that, you know, helped like illuminate something that was, you know, needed help in your life? You mean when I, someone held the space for me? Yeah. And like, in other words, you went and you coached somebody and you took away something from it that said, wow, this was a surprise. I didn't expect this, you know? Oh, I understand. So yeah. where, <laughs> when I think I'm in the seat of the teacher, yeah. and lo and behold, I am most definitely the student. Yeah. That's all the time. Yeah, it <laughs> is, isn't it? Yeah. That's every every yoga class that is every course that's every meditation i sit down to do i am always the student and that's why my um bio or anytime i explain anything about what i do i'll say for the last 25 years i've been a student and a teacher and i even always put the student first right because we're never done yeah. So I would say all the time. Um, and there's even a like an incarnation in, in the yogic tradition of that place of being student and teacher at the same time. That actually speaks a lot to the energy of the book Breathe because one breath requires an inhale and an exhale. It requires both to be whole. It requires the complementary opposites, the yin and the yang, to be whole. So anytime you think you're just one thing or you think you only need to know one thing, there's always that other side of the coin that is going to create the full picture. Right, right. Um, You're big on meditation. Um, I was thinking perhaps you'd want to share some kind of meditation with uh, our listeners today. Are you in the mood for that? I would love to. I would love to do a guided meditation with you and our listeners. Thank you for that opportunity, James. It's one of my favorite things to do. Okay. And I would like to just let the listeners know that I have a complimentary guided meditation on my website. If you just go to chara.tv, there's a complimentary meditation that actually goes with the Breathe book. It's called Breathe and Let the Magic Begin. And I think maybe we'll call this meditation breathe and let the magic begin as well okay before you start can i can i just ask you real quickly chara tv where did you get the that's that's your your past tv media field is that where you came up with it's so cool because i kept saying (laughs) wow that is really thinking out of the box i love that just well it is that but it's also that dot com was taken (laughs) oh was it So, so it was meant to be And because I do come from the media field, because I've always wanted to make inspirational media and share from my heart, I thought it would be, um, it would be appropriate. So that's something that I'm building. I have a YouTube channel as well called chara.tv. And that's a great way for anyone who's listening to practice soul path yoga with me. I'll start doing more and more on YouTube. Um, both on and off the mat. I share things about the monthly practices that we do and ways that you can explore insights. And then more and more, I'll start doing the on the mat practices as well. Okay. So before we get into the, uh, the meditation, do you want um, some mellow acoustic background or do you want to just keep this very quiet? Because I could... I could play some guitar like like I did last class I was in. I just had that thought. We don't have to do it. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's totally do it. I, I like impromptu. Hold on. You, you, you keep chatting to people. I'll be right back. Okay. Well, while James is getting his guitar, I want to say that we are so blessed to have him on this planet and his vision – and yeah, his just generous plug spirit. In here. I'm talking about you. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Haven't meditated with you in a long time. You know, we'll even get funky and do some alternate tuning here. Ch- 
Chara was making these wonderful statements about me, but I had no headphones on. <laughs> so I had no idea what she was saying. Let's get right back to the interview after this message. Have you connected with your gratitude today? I think I have something that will help inspire you. It's the brand new release from James Kevin O'Connor. Gratitude, recorded on Music Row in Nashville, Tennessee with producer Kim Copeland and team, is James' third full-length album in four years. Ten amazing songs, each one a different story about the emotions, journeys and experiences that you and I have lived. Songs like Dreamer, Jesus Teaches, Tango On and 51 Shades of Grey. And of course, the title track, Gratitude. Pick up the brand new CD today with amazing artwork and photography at iTunes, CD Baby and Amazon. Or simply go to jameskevinoconnor.com for your download right now. Send someone that you love a copy of Gratitude today. It might be exactly what they need in their life right now. Gratitude, the new release by James Kevin O'Connor. How you feeling, Chara? I feel great. Taking some deep breaths over here. Okay, Chara's warming up and I'm tuning. So uh, that's a good idea. I'll stretch. Take my breaths. Okay, now you're orchestrating this, so you gotta teach us what to do. Absolutely. I'll say I'm relatively soft spoken, and I know you are capable of doing soft guitar meditations because we've done that before. And before yes. we begin, I was just telling the audience how grateful I am um, and how grateful we all are for you, James, and for your vision and for your generous spirit and all you do for everybody. And you really are a visionary. Dharmic evolution is, is a vision, and I know your vision's expanding. And I love how you combine your gifts and share them with others, and then they combine their gifts, and it makes something greater than anybody, any one person can do on their own. And I think that's why you and I connect so much, and I think that's also why we enjoy our life so much is because it's not about – competition it's about connection and that's why i before we got too far in i just wanted to give you some gratitude <laughs> and the audience if you have not checked out kevin's uh, james kevin <laughs> that's that's okay though you, you're grandfathered in <laughs> if you have not checked out james's latest cd this is your latest one right yes it is gratitude it is beautiful and some of my new favorite songs are on this uh, CD, this track. And so I wanted to thank you for that. And for anyone listening, this is the combination of talents. This is what I call the new renaissance is where it's about connection. It's about uplifting one another and sharing gifts and talents to, to just do great things on the planet. Thank you very much for that, Chara. That's really sweet. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome. So what we want to do first is get comfy. Okay. Comfy and cozy. That could be lying down. That could be um, sitting up or, or sitting back. And just taking a moment to broaden across your chest, to let your shoulders come down away from your ears. Maybe you want to close your eyes. And then allow a soft, soft smile to come to your mouth because this is sacred time. This is a sacred gift you're giving yourself. And then just like I did 25 years ago, invite that fresh new breath in. Invite that ray of light in. And on your exhale, let go of everything you don't need. 
So today is a whole new beginning. This is the first day of the rest of your life. I always feel that when you breathe, there's something really magical that happens. On a scientific level, it's magical because you're bringing more oxygen, more energy into your system. You're exhaling the carbon dioxide and everything you don't need. And you're also stimulating the relaxation response. So I know we can all use more calm, clear thinking. We can all use that ability to soothe our heart. And you can do that. You have the power to do that by inviting a full deep breath in and a full deep breath out. So that is magical in itself. But in addition, when you breathe right now, you can have the intention of dropping down out of your thoughts and into your heart, into the present moment. This is your place of power. This is your place of wisdom and your place of knowing. And this is the place that you connect with not only life, but the creator of life, your creator. And when you open, give yourself permission to courageously open and allow the breath to flow through you, allow life to flow through you. Then you're allowing the creativity to flow through you. You're allowing the wisdom to flow through you, the artistry, the love, the passion to flow through you. Because we are channels of the divine. We are creative beings. We're meant to create. You're already worthy. And you're already deserving to create everything that your heart calls for. And that is your soul's path. And whether it be yoga or meditation, or any other practice or, or modality that calls you, say yes to things that are supportive. Say yes to things that light up your heart. And say yes to things that are going to help create well-being physically and mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. So take three deep breaths. And give, give yourself permission to live your magic. That was fabulous. Thank you. You too. So that brings back some really great memories. Last time we uh, hung out together, that's that's kind of what happened. But it was um, it was with an entire group of of um, participants in a studio, <laughs> which was just great. It was just awesome. So tell me, how are you feeling now? Now that you've breathed, how <laughs> <laughs> I I just. 
always feel more centered, more calm, um, more loving anytime I start breathing. It's something you can do if you're feeling stressed to calm down. And it's something you can do if you're having a great moment to really infuse yourself with that moment, to live it more fully. So there's really never a time that isn't a good time to breathe. Right. It's always a good time to breathe. Let's talk about, um, I got two two that I, I can't pick a, a favorite yet because, you know, when I first got the book, I said, well, I'm going to block out, you know, and I had like a couple hours I was going to block out to read. And then I said, no, that's a, that's a bad move because <laughs> this is poetry. And it's it, poetry to me is, if I m may just take a, a moment to talk about how um how important it is for me as a singer songwriter and you know um that's a big part of music for me is the poetic um beauty that goes into a song and just taking one phrase or one sentence and making sure you communicate it in such a way that you know it carves out an image in your mind it's so um it's very cerebral, it's very beautiful, it's very, you know, it like it hits you like a freight train and when it's communicated just like a bullet. It's like, wow, that really knocked me on my ass. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I'm feeling that, baby. And your book is, is, is that way because you're, um, you know, it's not just the craft that you poured into it, but it's your, it's your beautiful heart that you put into this. So I said, oh, no, I'm going to do just one or two a night and just let it you know, just stay, let it, let me just, let me just let it settle into my DNA and enjoy this. So, um, I did read, um, Avatar several times because you read that to me. And when we met the other day, really enjoy that. And of course, Breathe, I read. Um, so those two are, are really amazing. Do you want to touch on any one particular, um, Chara on its, on what's in the book? of the poems there's what 12 or there's more than that i think there's like 15 or something isn't there there's 20 is there 20 it's, it's, there it's just 20. awesome and the titles by the way are amazing i did look at all the titles and wow it's just great inhale exhale avatar i mean one ray of light this just beautiful um each title captures an image which is just great oh thank you yeah thank you. i appreciate that I call them sacred poems. Um, I, I'm sure all poems and all songs are sacred in their own way, but they are sacred. They explore the themes of awakening to your power and your magic. They explore embracing both the shadow and the light and why both of those things are important. And they explore life and love and the divine and they explore the divine in, in different ways. So that's why I call them sacred. The photographs, I call them self-images. They're not all self-portraits. Many of them I did take by myself, but many of them I had help with friends or family members. Um, some even my sons have taken who are currently uh, just one just turned seven and my other one's going to be nine. So they've helped me with some of the photos. And any of the photos in there are uh, someone looked through the camera lens with love to see the beauty in that moment, even if it was a hard moment. And that was another thing I wanted to share with your listeners who, who are all creative. We're all creative beings. And I do believe that even in the darkest times, there is the possibility of transforming that darkness into something of value. And many, many, many of these poems and photos were f darkness that was transformed into something of value. I don't know if I could pick one. <laughs> so I would leave that up to you. Okay. So um, I just wanted to comment on the photos also because um, very, very powerful images. Like you can see... Okay. Um, you know, on some of them, I can see, see the emotion on your face, whether it was whether it was happiness or you're struggling with something or sadness or elated. Um, it's really, really 
amazing how you got that, how you got those images to, to reflect, you know, how you were feeling at that moment. Tell us how you got into that space. Was it easy just to reflect back to a memory that was particularly painful? Thank you, James. Usually, whenever possible, I would try to do the photo shoot if I felt called to in the midst of it while it was actually unfolding so that it really wasn't recreated or I didn't have to try to refine that emotion. But that is the real emotion coming through. There is um, two photos in there with the poem Cry Love where I was literally sobbing in my bed. It was just that. after a, a breakup, so broken heart. And I also knew that that was very significant in that I was going to be spending some time on my own and doing some post um, personal growth things. And I was afraid and upset and didn't want to start over. And I was literally crying in my bed. And yet, as upset as I was, as broken as my heart was, I felt there was something beautiful about it. And I thought the thought that I must be crazy went through my mind. But I set up my tripod, I set up my camera. And just shot at that time, it was not digital. So I had no idea if I was even in the frame. All the older photos were done, you know, on traditional film. So there was no checking it. There was no, um, you know, timer. It was, <laughs> it was just, um, you know, hope for the best. Right. And those are some of my most favorite, most raw, most real photographs. So any time that was possible, it was to actually um, capture the real moment as it was unfolding. Yeah, amazing. I, I just love the look at the, of um, of some of these, and and I could tell that it was like an '80s camera or something, which has a, <laughs> you know, I still have that Canon AE one I bought used years ago, and it still has its own. You know, personality. You can tell there's something beautiful about those older cameras that they just they mm -hmm. they have a they have a look to them that is unlike anything else. Um, I want to I want to read um, a poem here, and I'm torn between reading. Um, <laughs> I should go for gratitude, right? But um, but you have this one called "I Sit in a Circle." Um, what do you think? Should we should we lay that one on them? Sure. If you, if that's the one that's calling to you. Absolutely. Yeah. I, it's just, it just jumped out on the page here. So I'm going to read this to you guys just to give you a little taste of uh, what Chara's book is all about. These poems are absolutely beautiful. So this is titled, I Sit in a Circle. I sit in a circle with God and my guardian angels. It looks like I'm alone, but I am not. They tell me it's not my job to fix all this. Stop trying to fix anything or anyone. It is my job to enjoy. It's my job to enjoy. It's my job to see beyond. It's my job to love and to make things out of love. It's my job to be still and let them teach me so they can teach and create through me. They hold both my hands and look me into the eyes and confirm I can do this. It will be as natural as drinking water and breathing air. Beautiful. <laughs> Very beautiful. You want to comment? Well, I think my comment would be asking you why you like that one and what made you pick it. It just, it called to me and, um, you know, it's tapping in. It's, it's just tapping into your center, mm -hmm. you know, and there's your circle. It's like, I, I was allowed to penetrate that circle. I'm not on the outside. I'm now on the inside. Am I close? Yeah. Well, absolutely. It's whatever comes through for you. And for me, it was this, um, realization that I don't have to try so hard. I don't have to force things to happen. That there are things I was created to do, just like there are things 
a rose is created to do. There are things an apple tree is created to do. There's things the sun is created to do, and they don't try to do what they're not created to do. They just do it because that's who they are. For me, that is really the definition of dharma. I know there's different definitions in different traditions, but for me, when I think of dharma or dharmic evolution, and I can't wait to hear your thoughts on this, it is fulfilling your inner gifts, fulfilling who you were created to be. And just like a rose keeps blooming, like that's what it does. You know, there may be moments of the journey that are, are challenging, but it, it is what it was created to be. And one of my teachers said that in the um, yogic tradition, that the word dharma actually means the law. And I at first thought that was a little confusing, and then all of a sudden it was like, now I understand. It's the law of nature. It's the law that a rose seed must become a rose. It's the law of nature that an apple seed must become an apple tree. It's the law of nature that you must become who you were created to be. And those inner callings, those inklings, even if they're very subtle, those are guiding you into who you were made to be. So for whatever reason, I was made to do self images. And I had that knowing when I was very young. I, I wasn't necessarily able to trust it or understand it. But now when my heart speaks to me, I have that inner knowing this is part of my dharma. And if something isn't part of my dharma, then little by little by little, I move away from that. Yeah, speaking to um, <clears throat> Dharma and Dharmic and Dharmic evolution, um, as as you just mentioned, um, there is no such word in the English language in the dictionary as Dharmic. So for anybody <laughs> who wants to create your own word, just go and do it. And I was I felt called to create my own word, <laughs> and um, and it's it's kind of like for people who have seen the the logo. It has this beautiful tree with all these colors, and the vision behind Dharmic Evolution were, is that, you know, God created us as a little seedling, to your point, Chara. We were just this little seed in the ground, you know, we knew nothing about anything, and we, we started to grow, you know, emotionally, physically, intellectually, all of these things, and um, it is our job, it's our incumbent responsibility to take that as far as you can. And if, and you know, God blessed us all with different gifts. And we, like you said, uh, you know, Rose doesn't try to become the sun or vice versa. <laughs> it, you know, it, it does its job. And it's up to us to like embrace that and feel like, wow, you know, a lot of us get caught up in, you know, we read magazines and we look at TV shows and, mm -hmm. oh, I want that life, that person. I look mm -hmm. up and I admire that person and, you know, I so envy them for what they have. And, and the Lord doesn't want us doing that. He wants us to, you know, just take stock of what you have, what you were blessed with. And anytime you're looking outside to other people, you're not looking inside to see what you could do with what you have. He mm -hmm. gave you a bunch of tools and possibilities and things that you could become. So, so you need to focus on them. And along the way, I thought, wouldn't it be cool to like involve and embrace as many other people along the way to share what you have and learn what they have and kind of put it all together? So Dharmic evolution is kind of multifaceted in its, in its reach, if you will, mm -hmm. because it's all about becoming what was that little seed in the ground. It becomes that beautiful tree that blossoms. So everybody in the world is on their own personal dharmic evolution. Um, if I may be so aggressive in my licensing the entire planet, but we're all trying to aspire to be something more than we are today. And, you know, it's like, you know, a, a young child is born and it's the most pure, most perfect being. And from that day on, you know, the child goes through this appreciation of it it becomes bigger and stronger and and you know then we get to a point it's kind of the old bell curve and, and we start to degrade you know but still along the way and um i cite these examples like um 
you never should give up on what you're doing no matter how old you are. And like a lot of people get all caught up in their age. And it's crazy yeah. because, man, if you're still walking around and you have breath in your body, you're, you're doing better than, than many others are. Mm -hmm. So you should embrace that and keep going with that. B.B. King was the best example I saw of um, recently of somebody living um, a blessed life, an aspired life, and living it to its complete um, completion because he was like in his 80s and he, um, you know, he got sick. And I remember this post on Facebook saying, hey, thank you for all the nice thoughts and the prayers. I'm doing fine. I'm in hospice. And then boom, he was gone just like that. So he literally played mm -hmm. until the day he died. So that's a tremendous gift. And there's a classic example of somebody embracing their dharmic evolution. He just, like he had this gift and he had Lucille and he played three or four notes. Boom! And that was his signature sound, you know? And it was like when B.B. got up, he didn't need, need, even need to play chords. He would just get up there and play a few licks and sing. And that was his greatest joy. You know, you could tell. The guy loved people. He just loved what he did. And um, and I see Willie Nelson doing the same thing. Willie's, you know, Willie's getting up there. You know, he's, uh, I don't know how old he is, but he's getting up there. And he just put out a new video and a new album. And the guy is just like, just crushing it. And so, I mean, when I see that, it makes me very appreciative and very happy. And I learn from that to say, you know, if you have something in your life like you do, Chara, and you're doing it, you're doing exactly what you preach. You know, you're walking the talk. And that's what you need to do. And you're embracing what your gifts are. And now you're sharing them with other people. So you are the epitome of the perfect Dharmic Evolution guest, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. You know, can I just comment on something you were saying about that Dharmic Evolution? And um, I, I know that there are people out there listening who think, yeah, but, you know, I don't either know what my gifts are or I was given something that is a cross to bear. I was, you know, given this challenge and therefore I can't pursue my dreams. And I know I felt that way too, but I really do believe that even those things you consider um, detriments or that you consider um, are bad really can be transformed or used for your good and for other people's good. And this may sound funny, but I still watch Bob Ross. If any of you have heard of Bob Ross, he's a painter and he has since passed, but he paints nature scenes and I find it very relaxing. So I like to watch him sometimes before I go to bed. And he would always say, you have to put in the dark before you can see the light. Oh, wow. Excellent. And everybody has, you know, their journey, their cross to bear, their what they consider their shadow side. I know I do, and I know my family history does. But actually, that is what makes the most beautiful songs, the most beautiful stories, and the most beautiful life is that combination of the dark and the light. And when the light breaks through, and when you say yes to your light, and you say yes to living your dreams and living your magic, then as soon as you start saying yes, life will start showing up to support those yeses. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. And, you know, we cannot ever know what God's master plan is, um, but there is some master plan. You know, we're just... Um, we just have to roll with it. And like you say, people who do have challenges in their life, um, and I'll give you one quick example. Some woman put a put a video up on Facebook this uh, about six months ago, and there was, she had this child who had no arms and legs. And I don't know if you saw this, but he was flipping himself up on the slide. He crawled all the way up. The, she wouldn't help him. And she would just be like, very sweet voice, encouraging, come on, you can do it. And he did everything by himself. So how many people did that little video um, just, you know, inspire as far as, you know, when we're walking around with, you know, healthy bodies and all our limbs and everything, we're complaining about the most silly things. So there's a purpose, I think, to everything. And, and I, I don't know all the purposes. God only knows that, you know. But we just need to do our best and embrace what we have. Um, 
And you know what? We could spend another two hours, I think, <laughs> Jara TV. <laughs> but it's getting close to wrap up. So I want to know, as we're starting to, to wind down here, um, what are you most excited about as you know, the book is coming out. You've done a lot of work. You've got so many projects coming up. Um, we didn't get a chance to talk all about, you know, your vision for TV and everything. So we may have to have a charity TV too. <laughs> and um, and um, so looking forward, like what are you ex most excited about for the rest of this year looking forward? Mm -hmm. Thank you, James. Well, you know, the book Breathe, that is, is the first of several. The second one is already written. We just got to put that together. And there's already a third that's like half written. So these um, books will keep coming and they are the prototype for films. And so, you know, this bigger vision, and you and I have talked about that a bit, um, how we can use what we do to support the most amount of people. I'm very excited about that. However, I want to remind myself that for me, the most exciting moments are really just simple moments, getting to talk to you, getting to listen to your CD, um, getting to spend time with my husband and my children, simple things, dinners and um, sitting on our front porch and talking, a glass of wine here or there, a cup of tea here or there. And I wanted to say that to remind myself, but also to remind everybody listening that it's so awesome to have a vision and to have that feeling of your calling and to start taking steps in that direction, but to not rush there, but to really, you know, hence the name of the book, to really breathe through every moment and to know that you can be your happiest right now. The happiness is not when the book was done, the happiness came from saying yes to the book and the little steps I took, you know, to create it. The happiness is now getting to share it. It's not like you ever really arrive at the happiness or the stardom or the fame. It's all these moments leading up to it. And then when you get there, if you can be happy getting there, you're going to be happy there too. Very so true. Excited about everything. Awesome. I can't wait to see your um, your career continue to un unfold with this. You're, you're the Steven Spielberg of um, Breathe. You, <laughs> you know, we've got we've already got three more written. We've got movies ready to go. We, you know, a lot of great, great things happening. And um, as always, um, love hearing about all this and excited to talk to you and see you as your career continues to blossom. Chara, it was a pleasure having you on the Dharmic Evolution. Thank you so much for being here and sharing today. Um, you know, we're going to put all your, your uh, links and everything in the show notes, of course. And uh, just want to wish you blessings. Thank you so much, James. And thank you to everyone listening. Namaste. The Great Creator. Inhale, exhale. Snowing flower petals. God's left hand, stand tall, incarnations, one ray of light, avatar, my crosses, gratitude, I have arrived, I sit in a circle, cry love, thank you for not holding my hand, I want, alchemy, the closed door, knowing God changes everything, shadow and illumination, and breathe. That's it, 20 poems now available at Amazon. Check out Chara. Go to Chara TV. Find out about all the cool that she has available for you. Whether it's Soul Path yoga classes, how would you like to see her live in a yoga studio in Burnsville, New Jersey? Check it out. There's mini Soul Path yoga. There's a retreat happening. Um, Chara TV is stacked with all kinds of wonderful things for you. All things meditation, spiritual, yoga, and chara. If you have not yet gone over to the Dharmic Evolution Community Facebook page, you're missing out. If you're an artist and you're looking to elevate your platform, looking to find out about this show, go find out what we do for other artists around the world in 71 countries. Yeah, put up your video, your new song, your new album. Do you have a tour date? Whatever you've got going on. 
Share it with us. Share it with the world. Let us know what you're up to. Also, if you're looking for coaching, a lot of you are. I have three areas that I'm really, really good at and I want to share and help you guys. Podcast training, life transition, or media coaching. I can help you in any and all three of these areas. You may be lost in podcast land and not know how to get it together. You may be a cubicle rat and lost in corporate America. I know there's so many out there, right? You just got to get out and do your own thing and you're not sure where to turn. Or you just may need some help on figuring out the intense and confusing maze of social media and find that you have been spinning in a circle. If any of these frustrations sound familiar, reach out to me, James, at thejamesoconnoragency.com. I can and will help you get the wheels firmly back on the track. I also want to invite you to please stop by iTunes and give us a review on the show. If you have not, please subscribe, rate, and review the show, this Dharmic Evolution show that is now around this world in 71 countries, uncovering talent everywhere around the world. So uh, if you would do that, the show uh, would really benefit and the other people um, that are on this show would benefit as well. So that's it for me today. Your host for the Dharmic Evolution, James Kevin O'Connor, singer, songwriter, audio video artist, master storyteller, and uh, international talent agent. Also, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So until the next time, when we meet again, I'll either see you on the socials or I'll see you from the stage.